how are you? Uh, still wobbly here. Do you know that I've been waiting for rain <laughs> all day, pretty much, and I didn't want to do any repotting today. Catlia Schilleriana is on the list. Next up for a checkup this time of year. After two and a half years in Lecca and self-watering. So I've been waiting for rain thinking I won't get anything done. It has not manifested itself and I'm going to hopefully not do a rush job while I'm in between clouds. But I do want to check on her because my grow method is not something that a Cattleya Schilleriana normally prefers. It is renowned to like its wet dry cycle. Self-watering doesn't really do that. However, we can see that there is a margin of truth in the wet dry cycle preference because I have a lot of dead roots here. So checking it up now is a good thing, even though I don't have any active roots. New growths will be coming soon. And I don't want to disturb her during the hottest part of the year. Now, this has made me think while planning this repot as to how I go about doing my self-watering setup, not changing it into anything else that would, you know, make it a wet, a complete wet dry cycle, but how I'm going to manipulate the pot so that I get a drier environment in the pot. And maybe in a year's time or two years time, we can double check and see if it was successful. But for now, my suspicions were correctamundo. Catlia Schilleriana is not happy with a very, very wet environment, clearly. It's pretty, pretty obvious, right? Lots of dead roots. Now, I always put a disclaimer out there that it is possible to be a Catlia that dumps its roots and replaces them with new ones. But even the new ones aren't that happy. So in this case, what I'm going to do is change my lecker in the pot from being very varied in size, as you can see, large, small, lots of different sizes. I'm going to clean her up and I'm going to put her into large lecker only. Before I do that, wash off the hands and wash the rhizome so we see what we're cutting away. I know that she can be successful in this setup because she has given me new growths, even though they were tiny, but she came as a very weak plant at the time due to a mix up from the order. I got a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana instead of a Cathia Schilleriana. So by the time this one made it to me, it had sort of been parked in the warehouse of the nursery, which is Großrechner Orchideen. It had been parked in the warehouse and kind of forgotten, so they just quickly packed it up and shipped it to me. So I did get some new growths from her. I know that this method can be tweaked to make her happy. Otherwise, she would have just keeled over completely. The little growths that I got, I put them down to her acclimating and not because of the grow method. So let's clean her up before anything else and then I will show you with a better, clearer, cleaner picture the new growths, well, new growths that she grew in my care after arriving and sulking for a full year. For a full year, there was no movement, no activity on this orchid at all. And then lo and behold, last year, she started to kick into action. To such a degree, I actually thought a growth had rotted off. So I tried to pull it off. <laughs> 
to clean up the rhizome and I pulled off a new growth. That's how vigorous she suddenly got. And if there are two in here, it's possible, but maybe not. I don't see a break, no. Yeah, so me and my, oh my goodness, I don't want her to be rotting at the base, thought I was taking off a rotting new growth and it was actually a good one. So she was quite, quite busy last year, despite not growing to the full size. But that's fine. You see, even a small growth will provide roots. So I have no other orchids on my schedule for today because it was a rain day, supposedly. And I went full on cleaning the leka and sorting it out. And I've become quite pleased to have two different sizes of leka. That's the positive outcome of a negative purchase. Now I seem to be very, very happy with my two sizes of Lekka. I am now storing two separate buckets of Lekka, one with small and one with large. So today I sorted that out in anticipation that I would eventually get around to repotting this one and making sure that I have all the large pieces that I want. I could also pot her up in lava rock but lava rock is so unforgiving when it comes to repotting. So unforgiving on the roots. I don't want to have that problem. And I don't want to have a problem that I don't have any of this on camera. So I'm just gonna double check. Woo, I think we're good. Yeah, so no lava rock, but I'm sure, I'm sure she would do really, really well in lava rock. Now, this to me is not a risk, repotting her without new growths coming or new roots. I don't think she's that kind of an orchid as far as I'm concerned, to my understanding, if there is such a thing, this orchid is currently asleep. Much like a catacetum, it won't notice anything happening because I'm only taking off dead, as opposed to having to chop down a root ball like I did with my Osteriae, my Coilostylus Osteriae. That was, that's a different story. There I chopped the roots off to clean up and get it into the pot that I wanted it in. But this one too, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be completely unaware of what has happened to it, except that when it starts to wake up, it's going to go, oh, well, this is good. That's the plan, I hope that it is good. It's not two, thank goodness. It is one with several directions of growth, which is also nice. So let's have a look-see, let me show you. You can see the older bulbs is where I've peeled off the sheaths. And you can see how small, but really vigorous, this little orchid is, little, well, these little growths were one, two, three, out of the same lead. That's pretty amazing. And I see a nubbin there, and I'm hoping that is a new growth, and if it's a new root, even better. Four, sorry, check this out. One, two, three, four little growths there. So that's okay. I grew one growth close to what it was, which is, was it this one? This one, possibly, or this one? Doesn't matter. One of the growths that I grew actually made it to a substantial size. So I am, I know that this can work. I just have to modify how I position her into the self-watering setup but with larger pieces to then manipulate a little bit more of a drier environment as opposed to making it too wet and giving her the idea that I'm doing what she prefers, <laughs> if that makes sense. So now theoretically, yeah, she's going back in her old pot. 
I was going to say I have a bigger pot for her in preparation, but there's plenty of room in that pot for another two years of root growth, and that is what it's all about. She is not that big that I warrant a bigger pot. So there's still a little bit of debris in the rhizome. Let's be prudent about it while we're at it. I do have very, very dark clouds behind me. <laughs> so I don't know at any moment it could all come crashing down, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to do this if I can and stick to my schedule, if that makes sense. I don't want any of this all piling up in one day, one, one day, because as the warm temperatures come, I'm going to be extremely busy with watering and flushing. So if I can get these little chores out of the way ahead of the season, really, really kicking into action, then I will feel a lot better instead of stressing. Because today was a windy day. It wasn't that warm, but the wind, my goodness, it is drying things out fast. And um, my little sprayer and I, it's almost like I've got Velcro around my wrist as to how often we take a trip <laughs> around the patio. <laughs> so that'll be it. I think I can almost film this in real time without having to do too much editing because there's not really that much more to it. And there is no need for you to watch me wash out the pot. And I will be back. One more thing of note before I actually do that. Look, I had two microfibers in here. So we are changing that to one microfiber and large lecker and manipulate the climate of the pot in that way. All right, let's go clean it up. Okay. This is one of those repots I also enjoy doing. <laughs> Big chunky roots, easy to identify the dead roots from the still good ones. They're not perfect, but the still good roots, super easy to clean up. Almost makes me feel bold and think I can take care of another orchid, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna consider myself lucky that I managed to get this one done today, which is completely for me, it wasn't the plan. So, one microfiber and only big pieces of lecker. And you little orchid are gonna be happy. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Let's do the loop. Let's fill it up and get that loop to float. Will you float for me or are you too big? All right, half float. And let's see where you, because of the two directions of growth, I'm just going to keep her in the middle or, yeah, in the middle. Just hazard a good guess here. That's the main growing point right here. Yeah, the middle is good. Now, because it's big Lekka, it's not going to fall through the gaps as easily. So that is going to be a bit of a fiddle. So this is not a thing where you just pour it in and then give it a shake. She's pretty much in position anyway. And also another thing, if I went up a pot size, her environment would be wet again. That's why smaller pot, and if she does so well, goodness me, I'll be so happy to repeat this process next year. <laughs> All right, big lecker. One lecker bead at a time, or do I go a little bit more ninja on this? I don't mind being here until sunset, as long as it doesn't rain. So I've taken fresh lecker, but seeing as the other one is clean, I'm going to take advantage and just pick out the big ones. 
and just pour them in gently, slowly, in between the gaps. We're halfway there. Just gonna give her a bit of a, a shake and raise her up. Just a little bit. Let the leka fill in through the gaps. What I don't want is too many air gaps. She likes air around the roots, clearly, but not too many. Okay, that has taken care of the climate in the pot. On the surface now, I'm going to be filling up more and more with smaller leka so that the roots don't have too much trouble finding their way through and in. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but I, King was lying there in my normal place where I stand up until just now. <laughs> right, so what I just quickly flushed it through with was the calcium magnesium solution with the seaweed that it was soaking it prior to taking her out of the pot. So I just used some of that up. And what I should actually do now, because I'm trying to get her... Yeah, no, that's fine. No, I'm gonna pour out even more, just a smidgen. It's just to keep the microfibers damp. There, that's better. Just remember what I was trying to do here and not be thinking of the normal way of growing in self-watering. Drier environment in the pot now. Large leka around the roots. Small pot, and I should be able to give her roots that are there currently a better climate to stay happy. Again, if not, then this orchid is going to reset itself and we'll start again. I would like to avoid that because that's what I've been doing the last two and a half years, but we shall see. I think that this way, tweaking the size of the leka for the pot, tweaking that a little bit is going to make all the difference. The next roots that come then will be much, much happier of that, I am sure. The longest part of this repot was actually putting the lecker into the pot. Otherwise, I would now be thinking, hmm, there's another one on the list. But again, I'm not going to push my luck. So I want to just leave it with the Cattleya Schilleriana and make this kind of an example of how to have a, an orchid that has a notorious reputation for wet, dry cycles, growing it in self-watering with lecker without damaging the roots. We saw that they weren't that hip at the beginning there was damage they didn't like it once again just to recap that some cattleyas will dump their roots regardless of the setup it's just in their nature on the other hand why not try it out this way because this is how to do a drier environment for an orchid in self-watering and leka that prefers to have a wet dry cycle but you're not actually giving it to them I hope that was helpful to somebody. I'm just chuffed that I could actually get a repot done today. <sighs> that takes one off the list and I'm still on schedule. Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you have any questions about what I've been doing and want me to qualify why I'm saying what I'm saying with regards to adapting the climate of the pot based on the size of the lecker, please feel free to ask your questions, leave me everything in the comments below. I'll be happy to elaborate. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.